It's time now to review headlines on today's newspapers with this day's newspaper deputy managing director, Kayode Komolafe. Good morning, Good Mr. Morning, Komolafe, Reggie. and happy Sunday. <laughs> happy Not Sunday. sure if the nation is happy, happy. because, yeah. I mean, Not a, you know, not a happy time at all. The Sorry, tragedy, Sunday, tragedy yeah. we are all facing at the moment. Well, a very sad family. moment, yeah. Thank you. Do the honors. Oh, and it is an honor, actually. Uh, looking at the cover of this day, of course, there's a quote from Buhari, along with pictures of Nigeria's fallen comrades. Buhari says Atahiru was a brave soldier who led from the front. Atahiru, of course, was the late Lieutenant General, Ibrahim Atahiru, who lost his life along with uh, 10 others uh, on a, as a result of a plane crash on Friday. Uh, the other people who lost their lives, um, ex this does include the crew, yes, it does. Um, are all pictured here. So, of course, on the on the left, you've got uh, Lieutenant Lieutenant General Ibrahim Matiru himself, as well as Brigadier General Mohamed Abdul Qadir, Olatinji Olayinka, uh, Brigadier General Kulia, Major L. A. Hayat, Major Hamza, Sergeant Umar, and also uh, Asani, Alfred Ayodeji Olufade, Adeshino Okbayemi Dizia, as well as A. C. M. Olamide Oyedepo. Other quotes from uh, the vice president who said that their death was a depth of sacrifice and that they died with their boots on, says former president Goodluck Jonathan. He was determined to end Boko Haram war and Zulum attests. He attests to that fact. Uh, Irabo himself also assures the sacrifices of fallen soldiers will not be in vain. The Senate president, as well as uh, Boss Mustafa, Nasir, Rufai, Gambari and other service chiefs all were in attendance to the burial yesterday. Uh, to the top, as we leave that sad story alone, to the top of this day, COVID-19, the federal government's 2.3 trillion naira intervention stimulus kicks off tomorrow and there will be rolled out with two states per geopolitical zone. Bauchi state touts 828 communities to benefit from this package. You can read more on that on page five. And finally, PDP governors warned the EFCC, that is the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that they should leave their party Alone. KK, over yeah. to you. Thank you, Adifemi. Welcome. Like uh, all you remarked you know, at the uh, beginning of this uh, segment, this is a very sad moment it is. in the country. You know, that, uh, uh, two days ago, we lost the ship of Army staff, three other generals, and uh, uh, six other. Uh, officers and men of the Nigerian Armed Forces. That is, in a day, 11 members of the Nigerian Armed Forces, including the Chief of Army Staff. Okay, so it's really a sad moment. It is. If in a battle, a country loses the Chief of, uh, the Chief of Army Staff and three generals, then that battle will be regarded as a very a dis, a dis, a disaster. You know. so what happened on uh, Friday was actually, on Friday evening, was actually a disaster for the country. As our hearts should go to the families, you know, of the dead. Yes. You know, it's also important, you know, to use the occasion, you know, to reflect, you know, on the uh, state of the nation's uh, uh, defense uh, uh, system. President Buhari's uh, tribute, you know, in a way, encapsulate the career of the uh, late Chief of Army Staff, you know, uh, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru, that he actually led from the front as a general. You know, uh, one thing that uh, history will, will always recall, that footage of, I think a few days after he was appointed in general, he went yes. to, you know, Straight to, to, battle. to, to battle and yes told the men that I will be with you, I will give you the inspiration, I will, will provide what you need, and I will you know, fight along with you, you know, that he was ready to fight on the front. You know. I really demonstrated it, you know, you know and uh, that shows, you know, the, the stuff was made, you know, as a, an army officer, you know, and the same thing also uh, could go for the other officers who died, you know, uh, along with him. The, uh, accident, you know, is yet to be investigated. 
it is hoped that the relevant departments and authorities in the world uh, uh, investigate this specific accident. But then it is important to situate it within uh, a general context. That is that the state of the Nigeria uh, Air Force you know, and their uh, aircraft. Don't reflect it because uh, it's been, some analysis have put it that in the last 30 years, we've lost about 215 you know, uh, 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 personnel you know, of Nigeria Armed Forces due to air crashes. You know. Correct. Since 2015 alone, we have recorded about eight crashes. In this year alone, in three months, we have had uh, three air yes. uh, uh, crashes. You know, yep. you know, along we've lost about you know, 20. Be, uh, people, you know. So that Just definitely you know, should call for a proper, uh, not just reflection, in proper probe and investigation you know, of the state of things with the Nigerian uh, Air Force. You know. That is our uh, fighting power you know, in the air defense uh, uh, system. You know. is uh, a period of money. But it's also it will also be a, a period of you know very critical reflection you know on the state of things you know it is definitely uh, a very sad trend you know that the relevant authorities you know the defense authorities you know, you know should uh, pay adequate attention to you know but too many to questions that I mean you know uh, the reports were saying that uh, the uh, aircraft crashed uh, due to bad weather. I mean, we do have bad weather all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's an excuse. Yeah, that is that is in always that is always the uh, I mean the, the familiar story. I mean, no, yeah. You know, for, by the way, um, General Atairo, you know, will be the third service chief, you know, that, you know, in the nation's military history that was lost to air crash, you know, and uh, in the earlier two cases, you know, there was also a story of uh, bad weather. You know? yes. The last time we had was 1969. When the late uh, air uh, <clears throat> uh, chief of staff, you know, uh, she to allow, you know, also died in 1969, you know, due to air crash, and I think it was a Actually, question of bad yes, now. Yes. Before then, uh, one of the predecessors of uh, General Tahiru, uh, General Joseph Akahan, you know, just uh, at the uh, advent of the Civil War, you know, also died, you know. In an air crash, you know, and I think the story then, as, as recorded by history, is that was uh, uh, due to some bad weather. So I think, in this sense, the, what is important is the proper auditing, correct? You know, of the equipment, you know, really the the the, the fighting you know, jets that we have in the fleet of the, of the Nigerian Air Force, and also to assess the capability, you know, of that particular. Uh, force, you know, the, 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 the Air Force in, in particular. Yeah. Understood. All right, would you take another story on the, uh, this day? Yes, we uh, we'll take uh, the, on a sharing note, this, uh, the 2.3 trillion intervention, you know, uh, inter right. uh, stimulus kickoff in, uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and that is taking over tomorrow. I think that is a very positive one. Uh, it is uh, being implemented in conjunction with the World Bank, you know, this will mean, you know, cash transfer, you know, to uh, people in poor neighborhoods, you know. And I think the, the system, you know, from the presentation so far, you know, by those who are in it, you know, appears very sophisticated, you know. It will be done electronically, you know, so that uh, learning from the experience of L, uh, 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 exercise, you know, in cash transfer, I think it's a thing that is very timely, timely, you know, that there's the need to support, you know, the poor, you know. Yes, uh, some economists, you know, uh, uh, write it off that, you know, you are just, you know, uh, you know uh, like, you know, just uh, pouring uh, money, you know, into the drain. It is not so. You know, legitimately, you know, uh, all over the world, you know, it has been, a, a, been found to be a veritable tool, you know, of social protection, you know. You know uh, Brazil, you know, has done it. You know, admirably, and it's been, you know, uh, a model under uh, President uh, Lula, you know. But then, the, the situation of uh, All right, Mr. COVID, Kamala yeah. Fair, um, before we move over to other newspapers, we'll have to go on a very short break. And when we come back, uh, we'll continue on the review of uh, today's newspapers. Uh, do stay with us.
Welcome back to The Morning Show. Still with us is Kayode Komolafe, Deputy Managing Director of these day's newspapers. We are still on uh, the newspaper reviews. I guess we should move over to the Daily Trust now. Um, the lead story there on the Daily Trust newspaper. Buhari and Vice President absent at the Chief of Air Staff's uh, funeral. Um, huge concern for a lot of Nigerians at this point. Um, buried amidst tears and encomiums. Lawan and other governors paid their respect. The picture story, obviously, is the final farewell uh, to the army chief and the uh, 10 others that died. Another story there, uh, how incessant attacks threatened 2023 elections. Um, the INEC uh, chairman has raised concern. He says that the attacks may affect elections and um, he's, they're willing to uh, meet with security agencies tomorrow. Um, I'd like, like your analysis on that story. And then another story there on the Daily Trust, concerns mount over rise in military jet crashes. Obviously, we discussed that yeah. earlier. Yes. Um, I guess we should take the uh, attacks um, on the uh, 2023 elections. Yeah, very uh, pertinent a question to raise there. You know, and I think... It is um, good that the INEC chairman, you know, uh, Professor Jacob, is also raising the point. You know, uh, if, if you just limit it to the rhetoric, you know, of um, uh, the agitators, as separatists, you know, as uh, people, uh, nothing, or I mean, various kinds of uh, discontents, well, the, the matter will not be worrisome. You know, we know some people have been saying that uh, there will not be election in 2023. You know, some uh, agitators in the southwest have been saying that you know they are not going to allow election in the Yoruba land. Also, in the east, they've been saying. It. But in the case of the east, they've gone in the southeast. They've gone to the extent of actually destroying INEC properties. You know, burning down offices destroying uh, 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 voters, uh, I mean, uh, poll, you know, my, um, I mean, materials, you know. So I think that is like, uh, I mean, that's like, I mean, that's a case of making good, you know, their promise, you know. Right. You know? And I think it's really uh, worrisome, you know. It because, is. I yeah, mean, because even in the best point, of times, even in the best of times, we discover years. that even when in the best full time, you know, when you have elections, I at the last minute, will, you know, uh, you know uh, as we've uh, experienced, you know, will, will report, you know, last minute delays in delivery of voting materials in the uh, equipment, you know, and rest. So if now uh, you are having the destruction, you know, of the infrastructure, you know, for uh, proper, uh, I mean, uh, voting, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a serious political problem, you know, which I think the authority should... Uh, uh, Look into because it is a different dimension entirely of the insecurity you know, that is raising, you know, the stake, you know, of uh, uh, the political uh, agitation, you know. And okay. I think it's, it's very destructive. It's a thing that should be checked, you know, and right. stopped, you know, as we move nearer 2023. Otherwise, yeah. it may become a case of self-fulfilling pro uh, prophecy. Right. You know, that those who are prophesying that. There will not be 2023 election. You could see that people are already working towards making it impossible. Because if you destroy INEC offices, you, dis you destroy the materials, you know, uh, the equipment, you know, for voting, then you are actually, you know, uh, I mean, planning, uh, I mean, towards that. You know? All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're looking forward to yeah. the outcome of that security. Yeah. So tomorrow. meanwhile, you, uh, the, that trend mm. is uh, prevalent in the southeast zone now. You know, before it's. Uh, extend to other zones and it becomes a national uh, issue. I think it is, it is important to stop it right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We're well, moving on to the nation on Sunday. There's no surprise that the burial continues to dominate headlines. This time you have pictures of uh, the widows of, um, of, um, of, uh, Ibrahim Atahiru himself, I don't know why that name went out of my head. We've said it so many times yeah. these last couple of days. Uh, but we do have his widow, Mrs. Fatih Atahiru, as well, along with other grieving relatives at the burial. Uh, but a few stories, um, aside from that, that jump out. First and foremost, the Yoruba nation agitators defy Akeridolu and ground Akure. 
Uh, you can read more on that on page 38 for all of the happenings that happened over in Ondo. And right here in Lagos, uh, the state itself, it says, according to this headline, is under siege by teen gangs. You can read more on that on page 19. Uh, in between the two of them, the Ben Ayade, who is the governor of Cross River State, uh, says that PDP, who defected this week from the People's Democratic Party to the ruling APC, uh, All Progressives Congress, um, he, the PDP, in response to that, have kicked as APC takes over Secretariat in Cross River. You can read more on that on page 30. Yeah. I think we, sh we should take uh, uh, briefly the through the insecurity uh, problem in Lagos, you know, yes, you know, I mean, I've been in recent days. I've been these reports of uh, uh, teen, you know, gangs, you know, mm -hmm. operating on bridges, you know, when people are stuck, in, uh, you know, attacking people, you know, stuck in traffic, you know, yeah. and also in some uh, uh, neighborhoods, you know, there have even been reports, you know, of uh, 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 people being, you know, uh, abducted, later released, you know, after paying yeah. ransom. So what this means that, you know, uh, that the Lagos State Commission of Police, you know, and other security officers should really uh, take uh, due notice of this, you know, and it is right. for action, you know, so that before the saw, you know, festers, you know, we should you know, be able to, to cure it, you know. So there's really... Uh, uh, a, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, a lot of reports, you know, as the nation, you know, has put it on the front page, you know, about the activities of these uh, young, you know, men, you know, especially in the night. Then, uh, so yes, the storming of Akure by uh, Commander Sunday Boho. Commander. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> did, you, did you add the, Commander to yeah, his name? Yes, now nah, he's the Com yeah. activist the, Commander the, the, Sunday Boho. The Yoruba, the Yoruba Yoruba <laughs> yes, again, it should be stressed that yes, uh, by Nigerian Constitution, they have the agitators have the right of free expression. You know, mm -hmm. yes. To that extent, the security people should, you know, ensure that uh, there is peace, and you know, they carry out their you know expression. But what you know should not be permitted is employing violence, you know, or rather forcing other people who may not share their views, you know, to have it. Because, for instance, if they have had their own rally in Akure, if tomorrow other people will say, no, uh, we believe in one Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, the Yoruba people should remain as part of Nigeria and make it a better place in the winter. I mean, they also should be free, you know, to have their own rally, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, pass across, you know, their, uh, their own views, you know, without molestation, you know. So to the extent that, this, this agitation, this expression is not uh, violent and nobody is uh, violating the law. I think uh, it's good and that is the way civilized people, you know, you know uh, conduct uh, uh, a debate. So I think the, uh, that should be noted, you know, as they carry along, yeah. Good. Yep. So should we move over to another paper? Yep. All right. Let's take the uh, Sunday Independent. The lead story on the Sunday Independent, mixed reactions greet calls for security summit. And the writer there, impeach President Buhari. That's a huge conversation that we should have. Um, Mr. Komala Fe. A, a huge one. I, I, a huge, I, I, I like the way you put it. Huge huge cover. Cover. Yes. yes. It's not and, a small one at all. Yes. And then we also have the Eldua agitators, which we've just discussed. Um, Sunday Iguho shut down Ondo State, insist on secession. He also did say that elections won't hold in the Southwest in 2023 and vows not to end agitation as uh, Yoruba. Uh, women and the youth took over Ondo State um, um, in Akure. All right, and then also the big picture story there, the plane crash, defense headquarters probes death of army chief and others, other riders. Um, NAF engages AIB and to conduct investigation into aircraft, which, which is what we've uh, discussed yes. already. Black boxes recovered from crash site. We would uh, look forward to that investigation. Uh, Senate President Governors AGF expressed shock at uh, Atahiru's uh, death going home as well. So I guess we should take the main story there, the uh, impeach uh, President Buhari on that uh, news, on this newspaper today. Yes, uh, I think uh, I, uh, what, I mean, the pressure should be on um, President Buhari 
to perform his duty as the commander in chief. Yes. You know, I mean, she always, she, she, the president should always be reminded that one of the things in the eyes of many voters, when he was first voted, voted in in 2015, was the fact that he was going to be a suitable commander in chief, you know, given the security challenge that the nation faced then, you know. But the record today is that the insecurity in Nigeria is worse today than it was in 2015. That means that the situation right. has actually degenerated, you know. So <clears throat> the challenge to President Buhari should be that he should perform his duty, he should wake up, you know, and perform his duty as commander in chief, you know. You see, because whereas it is easier to say the president should sack his service chiefs, you know, as he has done after a long delay, but uh, uh, sacking the president is not as technical as that. It's, it's, a, more, it's a more political uh, issue. So to me, in practical terms, I think it would be easier, you know, to, uh, from all forces, you know, various interest groups, you know, political parties, civil society, you know, political forces, to step up the uh, pressure on the president that if, he's, if he says he's giving his best as commander-in-chief, uh, in tackling insecurity in Nigeria, that best is definitely not, not good enough. Given the reports that we have, that almost on a daily basis in this country, you have reports of uh, killing, you know, you know the, num the, the, the territory, you know, of ungoverned uh, species, you know, you know continues to uh, expand. Non-state actors, you know, criminals, you know, as terrorists, as bandits, as kidnappers, you know, you know, at, you know taking over the, the country. So in that regard, I think a, a commander-in-chief, you know, you know, I mean, cannot, I mean, should not be having, you know, a, a good sleep, you know, in a, in a country. So I think it is more, to me, it is more practicable to put pressure on him to perform his duty rather than to talk of impeachment. Because impeachment will be a very complex, you know, uh, political process which, you know, might not, you know, be feasible. And quickly on uh, Sunday, on Sunday, we will, Sunday that, will, I mean, the yeah. way Independent has reported it. Right. Again, it should be stressed that whereas Sunday Buhu and his crowd, they have the right to demand self-determination. But they don't have the right to say that other Nigerians who want to participate in 2023 election do not But how would they even stop them? You exactly. called him no, a commander. No, no, I want no. to know what he will do to <laughs> no, stop no, them. No, no, no. Yeah, you, because <laughs> what, is, what exactly is he going to do? What, what they are threatening is violence. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, he once said that if, uh, if a particular political uh, leader, you know, uh, should contest for presidency in 2023, that he will, he will shoot him. He said, he said, he said so, you know. So if, if so far, if he has been, you know, tolerated in economy, I think that issue, you know, uh, reason should come into play. That yes, what he is doing is done in other countries, you know. As today, there are uh, people in Scotland, you know, as, you know, uh, I mean, there are people agitating, you know, for the separation of Scotland, you know, from, from the UK, you know. But it's done in a civilized manner. Yes. You put your view as close and you push for a referendum that. So it's a, it's a dream of a Yoruba nation, you know, that it should be conducted in a civilized way. That is that. It should not be violent, Why you know, should there and be that, they are, that they the have no place. right, yes. they have no right whatsoever to threaten those who disagree with them, you know. All right. So just as they have the right to express their views, those who think otherwise, who in my own estimation are in the, in the majority, you know, because, you know, they are in the, in the margin, you know, or the political landscape, you know. The overwhelming majority, you know, who are more rational and see this different, you know, they should not be disturbed, you know, and they should not be uh, harassed, you know, as they pursue their own interests, you know. That is what democracy demands. Uh. Very well said, Mr. Komala Fair. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for reviewing Thank the you. papers with us today. Thank you very fun. much. Yeah.